Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I show you how to play around with Clarity and the latest plugin from Google, Analog OFX Pro. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, mon nom est Serge Ramelli, I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris, France, and I make two tutorials per week. If you want to get them on your YouTube subscription, just click here to subscribe to my channel. And if you want to get the two raw files I'm going to give you for this episode and all the past episodes, including three 3D objects, presets, PDF, a lot of goodies, click here and you will subscribe to this goodies page and you will get everything for free. In exchange, you will receive a lot of newsletters from me with amazing discounts. All right, last week I showed you how to play around. It was just a little introduction on 3D and Photoshop on how to put a car in Montmartre. I'm not a 3D expert, this is why Eric Geisler did a great course on 3D, but I just wanted to show you how you can play around with it and hopefully inspire you to search further and get really good at it. This week I'm going to show you how to play around with clarity and because I see a lot of photos out there where people are just you know putting a lot of clarity in the photo and they really look very HDR looking and I think uh, you know, when you show a photo and somebody tells you, oh, it's just an HDR photo, you are missing on something. I mean, it's, it's a good look, but if you play with contrast and clarity, I, I think you can improve your photo even more. And also, I'm going to show you an amazing plugin, Analog FX Pro. So this is some of the final results we're going to be doing in this show. And let me show you how I did this. All right, guys. So in this video, I just want to review some of my basic workflow and show you an amazing plugin by Google called analog OFX Pro, which I like to give a little vintage look to your photo. First, I'm going to retouch this photo, you know, as such, just using Lightroom and also to show you again, because some people are new to this show, like what is my basic workflow to retouch a photo. This was a photo of a sunset and I actually kind of overexposed it, but I shot it raw and you will see with raw we can do miracles. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, you see, uh, this is my histogram. My histogram is completely, well, we, we have a lot of information here and a lot of information there. So this is all burn. So everything which is on the right means it's very high and very uh, too much exposed. So what I was trying to do is get, uh, I wanted to get details in the building. Actually, I could have underexposed it a little bit more and I would have gotten a better result. But I was young and stupid when I took that photo a couple of years back. So first thing first, I'm gonna open up the shadows and bring down the highlights. Now already we start getting details in the sky, then I'm gonna lower the overall exposure of the photo because it's way too bright. But you see the sky is still not good. And one of the key things that I see people struggling with is finding the right white balance for a sunset or for an end of afternoon. So on this one, I think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go for, um, I'm going to go for shade. Shade is going to make the whole photo warm. I'm actually going to even make it darker. And uh, one thing I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to put like, uh, I'm not going to touch, usually I would put clarity everywhere, which is kind of cool, but I'm not going to do it on this one because I want to show you something which I think is, it's, it's a little touch, but I think also that's one of the mistakes I see a lot these days where people just, you know, they use clarity and they do this and, and that, and they're done with the photo. So they have a lot of clarity and a lot of vibrance, which is cool. It's a look that I like, but I want to show you something a bit different. It's very subtle, but it's different. Okay, so um, I'm going to lower the exposure on this one a little bit more. Yeah, something like that. And uh, I'm going to, yeah. So I lower the exposure. I'm going to do my whites and blacks. Now, the whites and blacks, I'm pressing the Alt key. I'm going to move the white until I see some dots, white dots happening, meaning these dots are 100% white, and I'm going to come back, and then I'm going to use with the blacks until I see a lot of black points. So now, if you look the histogram, all the information are distributed everywhere. It's a bit on the left, but we don't have like one big block here, one big block here. We have a more tonal respect of the photo. Okay, now, as for the clarity, I want to show you something. I'm going to add a graded filter here at the top and I've prepared this. The graded filter has basically all it's got is warmer tones. You see, that's how it is when I start and I took the temperature to the right and this to the right just to get an amazing dramatic skies like I like. And the fact that the whole photo is in shade mode 
is uh, is kind of cool. Okay, so that's nice. Uh, I think I want to crop that photo. I don't know. I'm not so. Uh, I want to get more attention, maybe here on the. Um, uh, I don't know. Let's see how that's gonna look. Um, no, this doesn't fly. Just want to crop it a little bit, maybe something like that. I don't know, just to break a bit the four third look of it. Okay, and last but not least, what's one thing that's very important? I'm going to unabail the profile correction, remove chromatic aberration, and click on auto to make sure it's fully uh, sort of aligned. Okay, now very important. Uh, now, why I'm saying that clarity and vibrance would be a mistake? I mean, it's kind of nice, but I see it everywhere now. So I'll show you a little trick. Instead of putting your clarity and vibrance very high up, what you can do is use a credit filter and you go at the bottom here. Basically what I want, now it's taking the last information we've had, it's adding a lot of warmth on the bottom, I don't want that. So I'm gonna double click here. What I want is eventually I wanna get a lot of clarity in the foreground. Uh, you know what, actually I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna re erase that. I'm gonna add clarity here. Um, but I'm, what I'm gonna do is add minus clarity in the sky. I want a diffuse sky. Instead of having a very harsh HDR type looking sky, I wanna go to the opposite. So a little bit diffuse sky. And the reason is, one thing that I've observed that if you deliver a photo like this, everybody's gonna go, oh, this is HDR. Because it looks like SGR, you know, very contrasty clouds. But if you go the other way and make them a little bit diffuse, already you got a more natural feeling to it. Now, the only place I really want clarity to be applied is this, is on, on the building. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to clarity on, on my brush here. I, I choose a brush and I'm just going to add clarity. So everything is at zero but clarity and I'm just going to add a bit of clarity here. So now I got diffuse sky with a bit of clarity on the buildings. So I don't have this HDR sort of type of look completely and it's kind of cool. And last but not least, I want to close this photo. So I'm going to go back to the graded filter. I'm going to take a little filter here and I'm going to just make sure everything's at zero. I'm just going to lower the exposure. So I want to lower that and I'm going to do the same thing up here. Just so I'm closing the photo. I'm, I'm darkening this and I'm darkening that. Okay. Now, when I'm done with that, I like to complexify the light even more. So I'm going to make a little circle like this and uh, and just boost the exposure. Now, now the exposure has been boosted everywhere but in the circle. So I want to invert the mask for the opposite. So now all I'm trying to do is make sure that this building does not have an even lighting. So I'm putting a little spotlight here. Make sure that your feather is 100%. And when I'm happy, I'm going to duplicate and put it here, duplicate and put it here. You know, it's just the whole idea is to break the eyes here and make sure that it's not the same, you know, lighting everywhere. Maybe just add one more here, okay? Check it out, before the circle, after the circle. So now I'm done with the basic look for that photo. And it's already pretty cool and I love it. And But this is the standard stuff you see everywhere. If you wanna get really crazy, I'll show you a nice plugin that I'm discovering, which is really cool. You right click, edit, and you go to, if you have installed all the uh, Google plugins, which are an amazing plugins, Analog OFX Pro. Uh, oh, let me just click on edit here with Lightroom adjustments. Uh, and what that is, is uh, Nick Collection was bought by Google about a year or two ago, I forgot. It's, it was not so long ago. And uh, they used to be very expensive plugins, very powerful, but very expensive. There was like $800. And now uh, for like $150, you have everything. And what the, um, the color um, analog FX Pro is doing is basically you start here and you got different settings, classic camera, weight plates, toy camera, and vintage camera. And so if we click on weight plate, for example, uh, weight plates are very old type of camera and you have like some presets. It gives you an idea what it does. It gives like a very old vintage look to it, you know, so you've got different feelings. And basically on the left side, you choose the camera that you want. And on the right side, you have the different things you can go. Like for example, here, there's a lot of uh, dust and scratch and, uh, and the photo plate is what gives like all this weird texture. If you don't want to have that, you can just turn off photo plate and it's going to take it out or you can put it back or you can, you know, choose the different plates that they've put over it and really give it like an ancient look to it. Okay. 
Now the ones I like a lot on this one is uh, is the vintage camera. Vintage camera, basically what it does, it gives like an old vintage look to it. And you can have like little film look to it, like stuff like that, you know, it's kind of cool. Um, so let me just go through some of the vintage. First, you have the basic adjustment. Well, that's pretty simple, detail extraction. You can extract detail or not of the photo. Brightness, let me make, let make this uh, maybe a bit darker, something like that. Contrast, well, that's contrast. And then bokeh, what bokeh is gonna do is you have a, if you click on bokeh, you basically have a circle and anything which is with that, within that circle is gonna be very sharp. And around that, it's gonna be a bit blurry. If you don't want that, I can just turn off bokeh and now everything is sharp, okay? Uh, but you can use that for like portraits, you know, to make somebody stands out. Now, I love this one, light leaks. Light leaks basically, well, it means what it means. It means that uh, you can look at this and you can get different sort of light leaks like they used to be in old cameras or something just like this, like here on the corner like this. You know, it's it's kind of cool. It gives like a really ancient look to the, the photo and gives it a special... Yeah, a special feeling, you know, and you can lower the strength or not of the light leak of the light streak, or maybe something just here, you know, something like that or something like that. You just have to look around and see what you like. I actually kind of like this one, you know, make this very warm here on that side. Okay, lens vignettes, um, that's really cool. Well, it's vignetting. Or I've already done a lot of vignetting on this one, so I think I'm going to take it out. It's just a bit too strong. So something like that, or you know what? I'm going to keep it on. I'm just going to make it. I'm just going to lower the amount over oh, this way, you know, just lower the amount. Keep a little bit of vignetting, but not so much. I think I'm going to go back to basic adjustment and just lower the brightness a little bit on this one. But I do want to give it a vintage look. You know, I'm trying to achieve a look that's a bit different that people are seeing every day, you know. Uh, all right. And then you've got um, film type. Now, film type, uh, you got subtle, warm, cool. So I think I'm going to go on warm. And maybe add a film like this. Oh, that's maybe a bit too much. So, uh, well, I can just... If I go left, it's going to be stronger. If I go there, it's going to be more faded. It's going to be more contrasty here on the left. On neutral and faded, it's going to be less contrasty. And I can just lower the strands because it kind of looks weird on this. And then you can add grains. If I want to add grains. Uh, on the left, it's like a lot of grains. I just want to add a little bit of grain on this one. And I love the grain. It looks a lot better than the grain you get in Lightroom. Okay, and maybe I'm gonna lower the strength a little bit on the on this one and fade it a bit more. Okay, and then last one is frame. Frame is this, you know, frame is this uh, sort of, uh, you know, film leftover, whatever you wanna call that. You got a whole kind of, I think it's a bit intrusive in the photo, but anyway, it can be uh, something like something like that if you really want to go for a crazy look, you know. Uh, so, okay, save that. And so you got a complete different look. Let's go back into Lightroom. So that's a before, that's my classic, you know, way of retouching the photo, very 2014. And that's a, a completely crazy look, you know, with the, the light leaks. But I think it's a cool photo. Let's try this on this portrait of my daughter, Marine. Let's see, uh, so that's the basic raw file. I'm just gonna open up the shadows and the highlights and uh, whites and blacks. You know, just doing a little retouching. I'm gonna make, uh, yeah, clarity like this. Uh, you know, minus clarity and let's maybe, I wanna crop her a little bit more, something like this. And then you just, or more square format, I'm gonna click here, edit and edit in Analog FX Pro. And the whole idea is just to play around with it and, and find a completely different look, you know. I love to play around with these plugins because it really enables you to, uh, you know, go to places, it's like the presets in Lightroom. You go to places you did not expect. That's not so bad. So let's go for this time the wet plates. Let's go crazy. Let's make it a very old looking. So I usually start out with the presets and see how it looks. You know, and let's see if we can make like a very old vintage portrait. Uh, that's not bad. I like the whole dust and scratch thing about it. I really like that. So I always try to find like a basic thing that I like. Oh, that's kind of cool. I kind of like that. So um, I think on the bokeh, I'm going to go on the bokeh and uh, just make sure it's on her face. Uh, 
and uh, all right bouquet blur strands i can make more blur strands or less blur strands you know boost highlights yeah something like that no that's too much i'm gonna lower the blur strands just to keep a bit of a blur strands dirt and scratch i don't really need that dirt and scratch is basically well that's what it is and you got a whole bunch like that's like heavy scratches you know or that's very subtle scratches maybe let's keep some soul scratches and you can boost the strands take it out so it's really really cool it's it's the best plugin i find to age photo okay photo plate let's play around with photo plate and uh let's give it a different look okay um just try to find like a an old plate something like and something that's going to look like it's really old and was from the ancient times i think i'm gonna go i want something pretty strong like this okay let's boost up the strands that's kind of cool and uh, let's go to lens vignette uh, amount maybe add a bit more vignetting on this one all right and film type okay film type uh, cool let's go for warm see what's gonna happen with warm like sort of sepia look or uh, just playing around let's go for subtle subtle what is subtle that's pretty blue that's pretty green that's uh, kind of like that kind of sort of blue and i can fade it more contrast to the left more faded to the right strengths you know maybe get the strengths just add a little bit of blue okay i think uh, on the bokeh i want to make that circle maybe a bit smaller and maybe just add back a little bit more of blur on this one and uh yeah and now if you like something like this you can click on save and uh, let's call this you know um i don't know uh bw blue uh bokeh preset and uh it's going to be on my custom preset now and uh, so let's click on save oh i just want to add some grain i don't think i added enough grain on this one and add some grain on it make it really old and voila and so you got like a an old looking type of photography and uh, so yeah that's the basic 2014 look you know which everybody's getting and that's like you put that on facebook and people go wow what is that when was that taken you know same thing here you know very 2014 like you know i would probably add some more now that i'm looking at it some more circle there and that's a complete like old looking from analog ofx pro so really cool plugin i just wanted also to give you that trick don't forget that trick about clarity because you know uh in life you've got not only contrast with black tones and white tones you've got also contrast with a lot of clarity and not much clarity look here in the sky not much clarity here in the building a lot of clarity and it's gonna you know i hate when i show somebody a photo and his first reaction is like oh it's hdr it's like if hdr was like a magic button you would press and you have a very dramatic photo and i don't like that because this is not hdr this is just a raw file that i'm retouching and i'm actually going to give you this two raw files so you can play around uh with it all right so that's my trick of the of the day and i hope you enjoyed that and that uh, you play around with that plugin and um and uh let's get back to me and i'll see you in another tutorial all right mesdames and messieurs i hope you like this and i will see you in the next episode au revoir <laughs>